Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can go ahead and add environment variables to our solution packages. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. And if you've been following along on the channel, you've noticed I've talked a lot about ALM in the past, application lifecycle management for the Power Platform. Now, one thing that uh, we've always talked about is this need as you do move your solution packages from one environment to another, is that you have to touch them, you have to update them, which kind of defeats many principles of separating your code from your configuration and certainly making modifications once you've deployed, say, to prod. Now, there's a couple features that have recently been released that do help with this. One is environment variables, which we're gonna talk about today. The other is another one called connection references and do look for an episode on that in the near future as well. And so what environment variables allow us to do is allows us to essentially create some configuration parameters that belong to an environment. And then what we can do is we can actually leverage these variables as we move our packages from one environment to another environment. And so the example we're gonna talk about today is essentially like approvals. And you might have a situation with approvals where when you're in development, you want your email address to be used so that you can test out your code. But when you get to prod, you want say a business person's email address to provide those approvals. But how can you manage this without going in and changing your flow in prod once you're, you've deployed it there? And that's what we're gonna avoid as part of this episode. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless360 at serverless360.com. Okay, a couple things to talk about before we get into the video, just to introduce the concept. So environment variables is a solution aware feature. This only works with solutions. So you do need to make sure you have a solution created first, and then you can go ahead and add a new environment variable to your solution. On the right hand side here, this is the experience that will pop up. You can provide a display name and then a name for it will be automatically generated. Do pay attention to this value. We will need this value later on when we go to retrieve this environment variable from our flow. There's a few different data types that we can leverage here. One that's kind of interesting is JSON. So if you wanted to manage multiple configurations as a JSON object, you can do that. But for the purposes of this demo, we're gonna go with just text. Now here's our default value. Think of this as your target value. So think of this as the value that you would want to use in production. And then think of the current value is essentially your local valuable value, the value that you will use to override. And so this becomes very important because when you do not have a current value, the default value will be used. But when you do have a current value, then you want to leverage that one. So think of this as more of your dev value and then your default value as your prod value. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and let's get into a demo and see this live. So we are in the Flow Maker Portal, or the Power Automate Maker Portal. I've created a solution just called the Env Demo Solution. I've got my environment variable, which I would have created from here. I can go ahead, let's click on this. Now, in this case, I've got the default value set, but I'm going to add a current value as well. So this is the value that I'm going to essentially override the default value with. So let's go ahead, let's hit save. And then let's go ahead, let's open up our flow. Now just to demonstrate or illustrate the purposes, I've built this flow. Obviously we would go ahead and expand upon it, but 
for basically for understanding the concepts, this will work. So what we've got here is just manually trigger a flow just so that we can kick it off. We've got a variable. This is a, an initialized variable action where I've just called it approve email. It is of type string. And we will use this to, to capture the right value, whether that's the default value or the current value, it'll get stored in this variable downstream. Now, what we need to do first is we need to go ahead and uh, provide a, a list records action that will connect to our environment variable definitions entity. So this is something that Microsoft provides out of the box. This is not something that I've created. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look for any environment variable definitions where the schema name is equal to this value, C-E-R-E-B-5 underscore approval email. Now, you might recall this is the value that was auto-generated for us here. So this is that value that uh, does exist. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and query for it. And when we query for that value, we are going to be able to retrieve the default value. And that naturally, this is, is a list record. So it does return an array. So unfortunately, we get this applied to each. We could use a, a first expression if we wanted to, but that's why we do have a loop. There will be only one value. And here we're going to be able to retrieve the default value. And we're going to assign it to this variable. So this is going to be the approval email. Now what's going to happen next is we don't actually get to see what the current value is as part of this call, this payload call that is actually stored in a separate entity. And that entity is called environment variable values. And so this is where we're going to go ahead and provide another check to see if it exists. If it exists, then we can use it. But if it doesn't exist, then what we're going to do is we're going to just leverage the default value which we have captured here. And how we go about retrieving it is we're going to go ahead and we need to provide this filter query. And we're then going to be able to go ahead and look for this environment variable definition. And where we're going to find that is here. So this is going to come from our previous call where we're going after the definitions and we're going to go ahead and use this unique identifier for entity instances. Now, if there are records returned, we will then be able to loop through them. If not, basically this block won't actually execute. And as a result, we won't overwrite our approval email variable with the value that is essentially our current value. I wish it was named differently, but what's going to happen is it gets returned as part of our environment variable values, right? So here we're going to have this, this specific attribute and that's what we'll overwrite. So this is how we can go ahead and basically set our approval email. Once again, if we're going to go ahead and, and retrieve the default value first, and then what will happen is if we've set a current value, we will overwrite it. But if there's no current value set, then what's going to happen is we will just rely upon the default. So let's go ahead and let's run this. Now do recall, that right now we currently have both a default value and we have a current value. And so here we can see that we have our default value is retrieved, right? That's our default. And then what we'll determine is if we have a current value set and we do, right? So in this case, uh, the value of Brooke overwrites the value of Kent. And if we were to send out an approval, we would use this variable and we would send it out to Brooke because this represents say our dev environment. Now, if we head back over to our environment variable, we can now get rid of this. And so here's where you do need to make a decision. Since we're going to be operating inside of the same environment, we're going to use this delete from the environment itself. If we were going to take this package and actually export the package and move it, into a new environment, we would click on this remove from solution. But for now, for this demo, we're going to click on delete. Now it is gone. And let's go ahead and let's run our flow again and see what the behavior is. Okay, so it is finished running. We can see here that we've got the value of Kent being returned, which is our default value. And then what we can see here is that this is an empty record set. So there were no related values or current values. And so as a result, if we used this variable downstream to set our approval emails, 
we would go ahead and we would use the value of Kent instead of Brooke. So hopefully that helps you understand environment variables. Um, in a future episode, we'll also talk about connection references as well and how we can use a similar model to help with dealing with things like such as SharePoint sites or even say Teams channels. All right, well that concludes this episode. Thanks for checking it out. If you are not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so. You can find me at Weirzy. In addition, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like. Thanks, and we'll see you later on the channel. Later.